Let's get into it. The, uh, the American territory of Puerto Rico is in dire need of humanitarian aid. Tensions with North Korea have never been higher. So, of course, President Trump spent this weekend tackling the biggest issue of all football players. <laughs> uh, over the weekend, Donald Trump said NFL owners should respond to players kneeling during the national anthem by firing them. In a speech, he said owners should say, quote, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, he's fired. <laughs> and we can only hope and pray that's what Americans are also going to say in the next presidential election. <laughs> Trump feels that, that taking a knee during the national anthem shows disrespect to the American flag. Trump thinks people should treat the flag with more respect, you know, like on his official website, where you can spend $8 on a Trump American flag beer koozie. <laughs> Uh, Trump also criticised the league for making efforts to prevent concussions, saying they're ruining the game, right? I don't think Trump realises how dangerous the symptoms of these concussions are. Headaches, emotional instability, impulsive behaviour... Basically, they turn you into Donald Trump. <laughs> In direct response to... <laughs> now... In a direct response to Trump's comments on Sunday, over 200 NFL players protested during the national anthem. Some stayed in their locker room, while uh, others got down on one knee. But the players weren't the only ones protesting. Even the singer of the national anthem for the Detroit Lions ended his performance by kneeling down and raising a fist. Now, I don't want to say that Trump's making things worse for his cause, but at this point, the guy singing the national anthem is protesting the national anthem. <laughs> Once Trump got the NFL tweets out of his system, he moved on to the more important issues like climate change, health care, I'm kidding. He started ranting at the NBA. Uh, here's what the president tweeted regarding the Golden State Warriors' upcoming visit to the White House. He said, going to the White House is considered a great honour for a championship team. Stephen Curry is hesitating, therefore, invitation is withdrawn. Now... Can you disinvite someone who's already turned down your invitation? <laughs> Is that a thing you can do? Yeah. I don't even know that's a thing. If that's a thing... If that's a thing, I've got, I have a lot of girls to disinvite from my high school prom. <laughs> Candace, Beth, Emma, you're all disinvited. <laughs> I know it was 20 years ago, I'm pulling the invite. It does feel good, I'll be honest. It does feel nice. <laughs> Uh, Trump's withdrawn his invitation to the Golden State Warriors, making this the first time in history Donald Trump has ever shown a dislike for anything golden. <laughs> <laughs> Even the showers are golden. <laughs> Finally, uh, we wanted to talk about this. Did you guys hear about London banning Uber? Uh, a huge story. The city has banned the rideshare service after its failure to report criminal offences and carry out background checks on drivers. Uber is appealing the decision, but it doesn't look good. Right now, if you're in London and you go on the Uber app, it says your ride is 18 months away. <laughs> But Uber is vowing to come back better than ever. In addition to Uber Pool and UberX, London customers will now have a new option to be picked up by an Uber flying nanny. It's called Uber Califragilistic Expialidocious. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>